When I go to the beach and stare out at the water, I can't help but think about the rising sea level, a phenomenon that has been more or less ongoing for the past 18,000 years, when global sea levels were about 300 feet lower, as all that water was trapped as ice or glaciers. One can't help but wonder how many civilizations we've never heard of remain undiscovered below the waves. This is Europe at the height of the last ice age, some 18 to 15,000 years ago. A short time by geological standards, but very much part of our world because of the lessons it teaches us. 15 to 18,000 years ago, the global sea levels were about 300 feet. That's 300 feet below modern levels. Huge ice sheets covered Scandinavia and northern England. The North Sea was dry land. A huge tract of open steppe extended from the Atlantic into Siberia. And forests were way south. The era of the great cave art of spectacular cold weather adapted societies. That's the baseline. What has happened since then? The answer is that the world, of course, is unimaginably different. And what I'm going to do is just take a few examples to show you. And probably the most interesting and unusual one of these is the North Sea. The North Sea, until about 25 years ago, was considered to be an ocean that hadn't changed much except for a geologist in eastern England who announced that there had once been a sunken land below the waters of the North Sea. And in 1934, a trawler dredging for fish on the Dogger Bank in the middle of the North Sea brought up a lump of peat. And in this lump of peat, which fell on the deck, fell out this beautifully preserved bone spearhead. Fortunately, the skipper brought it back to England, and it was shown to the local archaeologists and exhibited at a local archaeological society meeting where it caused a sensation. Oddly enough, my first archaeology professor was the man who first examined it. And they realized that there were identical artifacts like this found in Denmark on the shores of the Baltic Sea and in England. And it was clear that at some point people had lived under the North Sea on what was then dry land. Doggerland was an area of land now submerged between the southern North Sea that connected Britain to continental Europe. It was flooded by rising sea levels around 8,000 years ago or 6,000 BC around the time that the Black Sea turned from fresh water to salt water, triggering mass migrations of agriculturalists from Anatolia into Europe and Asia, historically known as the Aryans. One of the projects I'm currently en engaged in is looking at the landscapes which exist under the North Sea. Perhaps many people don't realize, but until about 6,000 years ago, six to 7,000 years ago, um, the current area of the Southern North Sea was actually dry land. It was inhabited by hunter-gatherers and uh, who roamed across pretty much the whole of the area between Yorkshire and Denmark. Um, however, of course, uh, uh, global warming, the end of the Ice Age, the rising sea levels meant that this landscape was actually swallowed up by the, the, uh, by the sea over time and um, it was pretty much lost to knowledge. About six to seven years ago we started a project using oil data, data collected by the oil industry from seismics uh, actually, to start mapping this lost landscape and the results have actually been wonderful. Um, currently we've mapped rivers, hills, lakes, marshes, 
over an area of about 23,000 square kilometres. That's an entirely new prehistoric country in fact um, and we're now starting to try and use that information to model where hunter-gatherers may have lived with the idea that we'll eventually go back to sea um, and use modern coring techniques to see if we can find traces of settlement. Landscape features below the North Sea have been mapped from seismic data in pilot projects by archaeologists. The light and dark blue areas represent a river and a stream from the early Holocene period, while the green area shows lowland marshes or a lake also from the early Holocene period. Underneath all this is a gold area which represents a tunnel valley from the late Pleistocene period or Ice Age. Today, researchers are embarking on an ambitious project to fully explore Doggerland using DNA, seafloor sediment, and survey data from oil and gas companies. This kind of research used to seem impossible. In 1931, a fishing boat trawling the North Sea hauled in a spear point along with its catch. The sharpened piece of antler with barbs carved into one side was almost 14,000 years old, a remnant of Doggerland. The team of researchers mapped about 17,000 square miles of the drowned and buried country. In the Doggerland samples, the team will look for DNA from crops or even domestic animals like sheep and goats. Some have called Doggerland the Stone Age Atlantis of Britain, while others think of it as a sort of prehistoric Garden of Eden. In the late 19th century, H.G. Wells referred to the concept of Doggerland in his short story, a story of the Stone Age of 1897, set in, quote, a time when one might have walked from France, as we call it now, to England, and when a broad and sluggish Thames flowed through its marshes to meet its father Rhine, flowing through a wide and level country that is underwater in these latter days, and which we know by the name of the North Sea. 50,000 years ago it was, 50,000 years if the reckoning of the geologist is correct, unquote. According to a new genetic study published in the journal Nature, Ecology, and Evolution, people from ancient Greece and the Aegean Sea region were the first farmers in Britain. The migration was just one part of a large-scale expansion of people out of Anatolia in 6000 BC that introduced farming to Europe. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist, producer, and author. My books are available on Amazon. Please subscribe, share, and leave me a comment. Have a great weekend, and I will see you again soon.